Hello there, so in today's video we'll be talking about AMD and Intel and comparing the two to work out which one is the best investment. This video was requested by CB in the comments of a previous versus video that I did, so thank you for that. And if you're interested in me making a video comparing any two companies, please be sure to leave a comment it down below and I'll be happy to do that for you. Now in today's video, this format's gonna be just like my previous videos where I've done versus videos where by I'll look at each aspect of the company, we'll go over the balance sheet, we'll look at the income statement, we'll look at what the businesses actually do first, that's fundamentally important, and I always start with that. And then nearer to the end of the video, I will also give you my opinion on which one, if either I would be interested in investing in and why. And at each stage, as we go, we'll have the score, so you'll be able to see who wins on each metric, okay? So that'll be the format, the same as before. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Andy and on this channel, I like to talk about money and success. If you're interested in making, saving or investing money, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, then you get notified every time I release a new video. And if you enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up because that really helps the YouTube algorithm, which in turn helps me and I appreciate that. With all that said, let's jump in. AMD and Intel both create CPUs and GPUs amongst other things. But that's the core of their business, no pun intended, because these are the core of a computer. These are the brains, if you like, of a computer. It's the processing power that a computer holds. Um, I had a little look, and you, you may have also done the same kind of thing to see where are they supplying, and these guys both supply the major people, Apple, Samsung, places like that. So for example, in the new MacBook Pro that's on the market right now, the big 16 inch one, it has the Intel multi-core processor at its heart, and then from the graphics card side of things, it's got the AMD processors. So they, and they take it in turns. I'm not saying Intel always makes the best for the for the core brain and AMD always makes the best for the for the graphics. That just happens to be how it is in that particular computer. But that's what they do. And they're always fighting to see who can be the best and, and continually trying to improve. And that's what this game is all about because this is a future. These are very future facing things. If you think we're gonna get the internet of everything shortly, um, will be more and more common, more and more chips will be needed. These are the guys or two of the suppliers that make these, certainly two of the bigger companies that make chips that will go into things. So they'll benefit from the 5G um, roll out from, from people having mobile phones even. They're making the, the brains in the mobile phones, if you like. So that's basically what they do. Now then, they're both, like I say, very future focused. If you have a look at this screen here, you'll see AMD uh, quite happy with their current product portfolio. Now, one of the things that Intel are doing that's a little bit different, as well as increasing and improving their existing portfolio, they've also invested 132 million in 11 new disruptive companies that are future facing companies. So they're looking into autonomous. So for the autonomous vehicle market, for example, they're, they're already working and things like that. And they've started buying up startups. They spent $132 million on that earlier this year, as well as obviously investing in R&D. And we'll be looking at how much each of these two companies invests in R&D later on. So to sum this up, we'll go to the comparison chart and we'll have a look at the scores and see but I basically I think both of these are nice safe companies in terms of they are both definitely an industry that's going to thrive there's no fear that they're going to be running out of business anytime soon Apple's going to need things all of the major suppliers will need chips um, so these guys are well placed to provide those and they're working on and improving and making faster and faster and more energy efficient processors for the future and that's the core of their business there you go so at the end of the first round it's Intel won, AMD won, because I think it would be unfair to score either of these two businesses as a zero. I don't think there's any major issues there at all. So I, I think well, one all is quite fair for our starting point there. So next, we're gonna take a look at the charts and we'll see how these have performed. We'll look at the P ratio and things like that. So let's look at that now. So this is Intel's chart. Now I want to draw your attention to the dip here. And that dip you can see there, that is caused by a delay in release of a processor, basically the 7NM chip. They announced a six month delay in the release of that. And what that did is that gave their competitors a, a competitive advantage. And as a result of that, analysts downgraded the stock. So that's what that dip is for there. Now let's take a look at some other metrics and you'll see it's not really recovered much since then. It's been hovering around the $50 mark per share. Now, one thing to remember when we're talking about share prices is that when you buy a share in a company, you are buying a share of a business. So it's important to remember you're buying a share of the business. So look at what the business whole is. And if you was to take how much 
a share is, the price of one share, multiply that by the number of shares, that'll give you the market cap or the value, the value of the business is being valued at. And I really want you to pay attention to that on this one. So if you look here, you can see that the market cap of Intel is $210 billion. Remember that, $210 billion. Now it's got a P ratio of 10.2, which actually for a tech company, this forward facing is very low. So that indicates it's very good value. It's got a dividend yield of 2.67, which although that's not you know, a blisteringly high dividend, and for the sector, that's actually quite a high dividend. And its share price over the 52 weeks, its 52 week high was 69.29, its 52 week low was 43.63, and it's currently 27.22% down from its 52 week high. Now let's have a little look at AMD. So AMD, you'll see it's not had any major dips in the past 12 months really, other than obviously where everyone dipped in March, but even that wasn't too bad. Its P ratio is much, much higher at 76.38. So it's not offering as good a value on that metric. It doesn't have any dividend yield. So again, not as good a value on that metric. Yet its market cap is 98.39 billion. So it's worth almost half as much as Intel's. It's not as big as Intel in terms of market capitalization, 98.39 billion, but it's valued that if you was to buy the company, its value at the moment is about half of what Intel's is. So that's its market capitalization. And its share price is currently 2.47% down from its 52 week high. So if we go to the comparison now, end of round two. So now to the round two comparison. We have to give the PE ratio to Intel, it's at 10.2 versus 76.38 for AMD. So on that metric, Intel is much better value. Dividend yield, is almost irrelevant because AMD is not paying a dividend, so we have to give that point to Intel. And 2.67, it's better than you would get in the bank. Share price value, certainly on the way I work it, with Intel being down 27.22% from its 52 week high, mainly as a result of that downgrade due to the chip delay. And they've got plenty of other things in the pipeline, so I'm personally not worried about that. But you've got to remember, analysts tend to look fairly short term. They're looking a few months ahead. When I'm investing, I'm looking years ahead. So short-term dip like that, certainly on a forward-facing company like Intel, I am not concerned about. And it, that 27.22% in my view actually means we've got room to go back up and beyond again. Um, AMD is pretty much at its all-time high anyway. It's riding the tech wave along with lots of big tech companies right now. Why isn't Intel? I don't know if it's the honest answer to that, but I'm gonna give that to Intel because I do think sooner or later, Intel, they will real, people will realize that actually it's undervalued let's get some intel and that'll bring that back up and then share price recovered and you've made some money so now let's take a look at the income statements this is intel's income statements you can see its revenue in 2015 was 55 billion and it's currently 78 billion so 50 percent increase bear in mind the market capitalization of this company is 210 billion so the company's worth 210 billion yet it's turning over 78 billion per year 78 nearly 79 billion actually its gross profit is 45 billion per year at the moment. I want you to also look at the R&D expenses. That stands for research and development. The research and development, you can see that Intel has been increasing that. In 2015, it was 12 billion per year. It's currently just over 13 billion per year going back into research and development. And that's very important for a company like this, that they have good R&D because the R&D is what helps them develop the future products, which is what's going to make them the money moving forward because they have to be cutting edge. That's critical for a company like this. So we're also gonna have a look at the net income. You'll see in 2015, that was 11 billion, and they've over doubled that to over 23 billion in the current trailing 12 months. It's also interesting to look at the revenue per share. It started off in 2015 at 11.67 per share, and in the current period, it's almost doubled to 18.34 per share. So you can see that's nicely growing there as well. Now let's have a little look at AMD. Now AMD, remember this is a 98 billion market cap company. So the market cap is half of that of Intel. So it would be fair to expect it to be half as much revenue, but it's nowhere near half as much revenue. In 2015, it had 3.9 billion of revenue. In the current trailing 12 months, it's got 7.6 billion revenue, which sure, that's decent revenue, but that is far short of what Intel had. Its gross profit has tripled between 2015 and the current trend 12 months, and that's fine. It's gone from 1 billion to 3.3 billion. However, 
Intel's, if you recall, hasn't has, although it hasn't tripled, it's gone up by more than that amount. So I'm going to show you actually a graph to illustrate what I'm talking about here. So can you see the gross profit line here? You see in 2005, Intel was making a profit of 23 billion. So back in 2005, 15 years ago, Intel was making more money then than AMD are making today in gross profit. At that point in time, AMD were making 2.39 billion per year. Again, that's fine. And if we fast forward to today, you'll see AMD have grown theirs from their 2 billion to 3 billion, whilst Intel have grown theirs from their 20 something billion all the way up to 45 billion. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to work out which has had the better growth there. Yet, if you were to look at the share price, you, you would think that AMD is outperforming Intel. So, you've, so that is something to remember, you know, when it comes to the stock market and share prices in the short term share price is just a reflection of voting it's a voting machine people vote um, in the long term it's a weighing machine so in the long term intel's going to go up in my view more than amd i think amd is already close to where its its value is if not overvalued even a intel on the other hand it's got plenty of room to go up. So that's what I'm sure why I'm showing you this here so that you can easily see that in a graph form. I know normally I don't show you on a graph form. I normally just talk about numbers, but here I think that displays it beautifully. You can literally see that the growth that Intel has had just literally in the last 2 years is more than all of the profit that AMD makes and I think that says it all. Let's get back to AMD's income statement anyway so we can see more of what's going on. So their net income, they were actually making a loss back in 2015 of 660 million and they've turned that around so in the current 12 months they're making a profit of 609 million. Their research and development costs, if you remember, Intel's was 13 billion in the current year. In the current year you'll see research and development for AMD is 1.7 billion. It's a substantial amount of money, but it's what about a ninth, one ninth, one eighth, one ninth of the amount of money that Intel uh, um, invest in on research and development. And bearing in mind, these have to develop fast future chips. The ones that invest the most are the ones that's going to make the most. So it's great the AMD are spending money on research development. I appreciate that's why they're not paying a dividend because their profits aren't big enough to pay a dividend anyway, quite honestly, not and put money into research development. If you look, they're putting nearly 50% of their gross profit is going into research and development, but Intel are able to put much, much more in. So as a result of that, I'm giving this one to Intel. So an income statement, Intel wins. I love that Intel's investing almost eight times as much on research and development for starters and it's had better growth in real terms. It's had better growth. And I know it's already a bigger company, so you're going, well, it's already closer to its max. That may be so, but it's only been valued at twice as much. It's doing a lot better, as you could see. I, I don't think the numbers are lying to us at all. There. So now let's look at the dividend safety. We always do this part, of course. There's nothing to look at for AMD. It has no dividends, so we're just going to look at Intel's dividend safety. It's Revenue per share, we can see, has been growing, and I pointed that out in the last one. In 2015, it was $11.67 per share. In the current trend, 12 months, it's up almost doubled to $18.34 per share, so that's good growth there. The payout ratio, you can see back in 2015, was 39.89%. You can see it peaked in 2017 at 52.83%. And it's currently at 23.49%. So it's never really been much over 50%. So that's nice to see. So I'd say there's plenty of headroom. It's been paying a dividend per share, which you can see has been growing certainly since 2015. It's grown every year. It was 96 cents, then it was $1.04, then $1.08, then $1.20, $1.26, and in the current year, $1.29 per share. So dividend safety, we're going to give that one to. Intel. Next, we'll look at the assets versus the liabilities. The total assets for Intel versus the total assets for AMD. So Intel total assets, $152 billion, AMD, $6.5 billion. Now bear in mind, Intel is valued as a market cap of 210 billion. AMD has a market cap of 98 billion. So just that figure on its own without looking at the other figures, I think tells you which one's closer to fair value. It's, it's very clear to see from that. But if you look at the assets versus liabilities, you'll see assets versus liabilities, they're both excellent. If you don't know already, 
If you've got a score of one or above, that's good. Over two is outstanding, and both of these are over two, so they've both got excellent on that, I would say. Intel just wins slightly at 2.16, whereas AMD's got 2.0 there, but still very, very good. There's nothing at all wrong with that. Current assets versus current liabilities. Again, it's the same kind of deal. If it's over one, that's good. Over two is excellent. Uh, very few companies get to be higher than three. Intel is 1.97, so almost two, so really, really good. AMD is well over two, it's 2.7, so that's a win to AMD. So if we go to the comparison for that, we're gonna give assets to liabilities. Intel was slightly better ratios than AMD, but AMD was still over two, so it'd just be so unfair to not give it a point for that. That's why I'm giving them one all for that, although it was slightly better for Intel. AMD was just so good, it would be cruel to rank it down. I could really argue the similar thing for current assets versus current liabilities because Intel's current assets versus current liabilities was almost two, but it was almost, it wasn't over two. Intel's was, all, sorry, AMD's was almost three. So it's, you know, I've got to give AMD that because almost three is really, really good. Even though Intel's is excellent, there's nothing wrong with it at all. AMD, we've got to give it the point because it was clearly better on that metric. Next, we'll take a look at the balance sheets. So we're gonna do the other way around now. I'm gonna start with AMD and then we'll look at Intel. So this is AMD's balance sheet. You can see the total cash and short-term investments back in 2015 was 785 million and it's currently standing at 1.77 billion. So that's grown nicely. If we look at their total current assets, you'll see 2.3 billion back in 2015 and that's grown to 5 billion in the current year. And their total assets range from 3 billion in 2015 up to 6.5 billion in the current trading 12 months. So that's nice, they've doubled. They've got up to 6.5 billion in assets, total assets. So if we look at the total equity under the stockholder equity here, that has grown as well. It's now 3.3 billion in the current trading 12 months and it's been growing nicely. So that's nice to see. Now let's look at Intel on the same kind of metrics. So Intel is cash on hand much, much bigger, 25 billion and it's, basically stayed around the same, it's dipped down and now it's built it back up again. Its total current assets have risen from 38 billion up to 44 billion. So that's just its current assets. So its current assets have grown by 6 billion. If you recall, AMD's current assets totaled 6 billion and the total assets for Intel have risen from 101 billion. They've risen by over $50 billion to 152 billion. So they've grown by about eight times what AMD's total assets were. I'm just gonna check, I'm not telling you porkies here. AMD's total assets, yeah, AMD's total assets, 6.5 billion. Intel, 152 billion, so much, much bigger. And if we look at the stockholder equity, and bear in mind as an investor, as a shareholder holding shares in this company, and this company is worth a market cap, 210 billion, it's got stockholder equity of 82 billion, which has increased from 61 billion. So that's an increase of $21 billion between 2015 and the current year, where if we look at the stockholder equity for AMD, you can see it was in the negative and it's now 3.3 billion. And then bear in mind, this is a 98 billion market cap. So this is a clear win again to Intel. Intel's grown its assets in the last five years more than AMD's total assets Plus, it has a reasonable amount of stockholder equity, whereas AMD, in proportion to its market cap, doesn't, um, indicating it's slightly overvalued, whereas Intel is much better value on that metric. So let's move on again. And if we go here, we can see the dividend yield, 2.67%, pay at ratio, 27.24%, six years growth, and it's got a nice growth rate of 6.96%. So it's growing at a very nice rate. And if we look at the history, click all, I'd say that's a thing of beauty, folks. So I'd say this is a nice, safe dividend. As you can see, it's growing nicely. There are periods of time where they've frozen the dividend, like here you can see it stayed the same. It didn't increase, it just stayed the same there, but it didn't get dropped either. And you can see they did it there as well for more than a year. Each one of these lines is a quarter, so there'll be four per year but recently it's been going up and up every year. So I would say this is excellent on that front. So let's go to the comparison for that now. Again, 
AMD loses this one simply because it's got no dividends, but Intel actually it's had really good dividend growth at 6.96% and it's been growing that dividend for six consecutive years. As we saw when we looked at the charts, it never dropped a dividend either. It always kept it the same or increased it. So as a, as a dividend company, it's actually pretty good, albeit only a fairly low dividend rate. It's one that's going to grow. So if you're into growth, dividend growth investing, this is one that I predict is likely to grow and it clearly has been already and it's likely to long into the future. So I do think this is good as a dividend play. Now let's look at the analyst forecasts for each of these two companies. So here's Intel's analyst forecast. As you can see, there's been 31 analysts offering a 12 month price target. On the high side, eight of them say it's going to be high and they're predicting $82 of a high. They're predicting a low of $45 and the average prediction is $56.58, which offers a 12.2% upside. The analysts are actually saying that's a hold despite offering a 12. 2% upside and if we look at AMD's 12 month forecast, here's AMD's 12 month forecast here. This has actually had 26 analysts offering the 12 month price target. They've got highs of $120, an average of $81.30 and a low of $50, which on average there offers a downside of 4.97%, which oddly is odd I find because they've actually put it as a moderate buy but with a downside of 4.97% overall. So for that reason I'm giving that one to Intel because I'll take an upside over a downside any day of the week. So that gives our final score Intel 11, AMD 3. Now for me which one do I prefer? I think it's very clear here. We've got a clear win at Intel. I like that they've been investing more into R&D. I like that they've been buying up startup companies as well quite honestly i know the analysts don't like that and that's probably one of the reasons they've downgraded it i know they had that chip delay earlier in the year and that also downgraded the value of the share but for me that's a good thing because that actually makes it better value as a company and as we could see and i kept pointing out the market cap there its earnings to its market cap are, are massive basically and so as a result of that it's market cap has to go up, which will push the share price and the share price is what drives the market cap. So the share price will have to go up over time and I buy for three, five year long term. You know, I always look long into the future. If I don't think I can make money in three or five years, then I'm not that interested. But you know, I'm looking for shares I can buy and hold. And this is a company that in my view, in 2030, it'll still be growing. It'll still be making good returns. So Intel is a clear winner for me. I'm not saying AMD's bad by any stretch of the imagination. Clearly, it's a company that's likely to have a lot of future growth. Both these companies are going to benefit greatly from the 5G revolution, from the Internet of Things, from autonomous vehicles and the like. But for me, out of the two, if you're asking me which one would I invest in, it's definitely Intel. And actually, I am adding this one to my shortlist. I'm going to do some more research into it. And if you were going to invest in it, I would recommend you do your own research as well. But I am going to do some more research into this. And it may well make my shortlist. And I might well be ending up buying some shares in Intel in the very near future. And if I do, I'll no doubt report back and let you guys know. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. All that leaves me to say is thank you for watching. Bye-bye.